The eruption activity here on the Big Island has fascinated scientists and visitors for decades, if not longer. These are scenes of more recent lava flows, but for this story, we take you back some 40 years. With the exceptions of two eruptions that lasted less than one day, Kilauea had not erupted on this East Rift Zone since 1840. This change on the morning of February 28, 1955, is when a line of fissures opened up. The lava flow took everything in its path. This eruption continued for 88 days. to the sea and spilled over the cliffs, demonstrating how our island grew. The molten lava falls into the sea and cools, forming new land. This is the way Hawaii was created. One of the more impressive fountainings came from the Kilauea Iki eruption, which began November 14, 1959. One very large and seven smaller fountains were spewing red-hot molten lava. Approximately 61 million cubic meters of lava was poured into the crater during 16 short eruptive episodes. On January 13, 1960, eruption commenced on the east rift zone of Kilauea. This continued through February 19, spewing 113 million cubic meters of lava. Cameraman Art Carter makes the trek into the lava fields to capture these remarkable scenes. The Kilauea Iki eruption was, at that time, the most detailed study of eruptive activity ever at the Hawaii volcano. Earthquakes, volcanic tremor, tilting of the ground, a rate of lava extrusion, lava fountain height, and the temperature and chemistry of the lava were recorded almost continuously. These methods are still used today to predict eruptions and to better understand the inner workings of volcanoes and how they erupt. Art Carter again gets the shot, but only by leaving his camera and getting out of there to avoid the extreme heat. At a much safer distance, visitors chose to do their viewing from the comfort of the volcano house. Or you could stand at a safe distance along the chain of craters road, which is where I was as a kid. Here's what it looks like today, and here it is at its peak, shooting lava 1,150 feet up in the air. In a week's time, the pool of lava in the crater was 300 feet deep. All total, 16 phases of activity were recorded here, lasting up to 36 hours each. Today at the park, you can walk on what's known as Devastation Trail. It got its name from this, ashes from the nearby fountain burying the asphalt highway. One of the more eruptive phases recorded a maximum height of 1,900 feet. This brought even more visitors to this location. As the eruption continued, lava poured down the wall of the crater. The lava lake grew larger and deeper, and both the rate the lava extruded from the vent and the size of the lava fountain increased. The first phase of the eruption continued for seven days until the crater was half filled with lava and the level of the lava lake reached the height of the vent. During the second phase of the eruption, lava spilled from the lava lake in the deeper east crater and began to flow into the west crater. After many eruption episodes, the unstable walls of the growing cinder cone collapsed into the lava lake. The eruption continued for four more weeks and included 16 additional eruptive phases. Each eruptive phase produced a lava fountain. Kilauea volcano in Hawaii erupted spectacularly in 1959 from a summit vent. A high cinder cone was built over 36 days during multiple phases of lava fountaining. The devastated area was and remains mostly undeveloped and inside the park.
Today, the park is quiet, but signs of what was and maybe what is still to come remains visible at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park.